uh, I think the job, my job is easier now that uh, after all the speakers that they have shown, uh, you know, the uh, uh, background on the SEC and the prediction models. Uh, my presentation, uh, first let me just uh, introduce my uh, uh, co-authors, uh, Jonathan Rodriguez, he's a master's student who did this work, and uh, Dr. Adi Wabaida is a research associate who helped in, in the effort and, and uh, do the prediction models. Uh, the presentation, we, I'm going to go over the experimental program and some of the results that we have done on these mixes, and then also we like everybody is doing, we are looking into these models. So one of the uh, reasons why we are doing this is mentioned by my previous, uh, my, uh, the, uh, the uh, presenters before me, is that SEC uh, has high shrinkage, especially plastic shrinkage. And one of the options to mitigate that is to add fibers, and uh, you know that will help reduce the cracking. But when we add the fibers, we wanted to know, especially when you do hybrid fibers, uh, some of the DOTs are against one type of fiber uh, for, for whatever reason. And, and these mixes, you will notice that the uh, fractions, the uh, fibers that we added, are those that we can be pumping them. And so the mix, we, we did not go very high on the fiber mixes because we had to confirm to the other uh, standard specification. So one, one of the questions was, what would happen if you add these fibers to the creep so uh, and so these mixes that we have done, they pass through another level of testing, including the restrained shrinkage. So we don't want to, you know, put too much fiber, you know, solve one problem but have another problem. So we ended up with uh, selected mixes that have passed the restrained shrinkage testing. And uh, one of them, when we were reviewing, there was one or two papers on this topic that came out recently. Uh, during the time we were doing the work, and one of the uh, their conclusion was that the prediction models really need to be updated to include fibers in them. So we we tried to uh, this was our objective, and I believe we got a little bit different results from from that. And I think it is the amount of fibers that we have used as much much higher than the one we have used. So we looked at the uh, models, the ACI 209, the B3 model and the uh, uh, CEB, you know, the 99, and the Gardner and Luckman 2000 model. Those are some of the models that the uh, ACI 209 have addressed, and we had some background. So some of the mixes that we have used, uh, we used uh, steel, the steel fibers, and, uh, you know, the uh, polypropylene fibers. The, uh, these are uh, special type of fibers made by Euclid. They're the long fibers. They're, they're kind of twisted fibers. Uh, and they, they really, uh, they call them the uh, tough strand because they, they really about three, four fibers twisted together and they end up, when they put them in the concrete, they end up uh, kind of uh, like a flower and, and then the roots can, so it gives you much better uh, ad adherence and bond to the concrete. So we tried two lengths of the fibers and uh, the uh, 1.5 inches, we ended up the one that we used in pumping with the contractor couple of different projects that was implemented. And we also wanted to look at, you know, what if we mix the, uh, 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 you know, the fibers, you know, make them hybrid, one type, and, and uh, the macro and the, the, the microfibers, and also the steel and the microfibers, what would happen? And uh, they, we went through all the different tests, and, uh, you know, uh, some, you know, most of them were optimized to pass most of these tests, so they can be, you know, uh, used in the field under field application. Our creep setup is, is similar to what the others have showing. We, this is, uh, we developed this in-house, and in, I think from 1999, we have about 18 regs that was done for the high-performance concrete, but high-performance concrete, high-strength, I should say, for pieces girders. We developed this type of uh, reusable way of putting vibrating wire gauges and the rigs are loaded from the bottom, and it has 400 uh, KSI yielding uh, uh, high strength uh, uh, bars that are, and then the, uh, we have three cylinders, and each one has three vibrating wire on the outside externally, so we can, if there's any deviation in the loading, at least we can take the average of two readings or three readings. Even. 
So if there's any deviation in the loading at one, uh, even if it's a small, you can see that one of the gauges would, would go up. And the, all the data, instead of using the mechanical way, uh, you know, that would be too much. Uh, all the data is collected by a data logger, and we have a walk-in environmental chamber, um, and uh, you know, we have about 16 regs as, that were loaded most of the time. And to get the free shrinkage, the same, we have two cylinders, they are placed close to the uh, uh, rig. And, you know, to avoid the, uh, what we did is since the measurements on each cylinder is independent of the other cylinder, we used high strength sulfur compound to do the capping. So we minimize, instead of grinding, we found out that a much better way. So at least this is, that will be independent. And there's a load cell that measures the load all the time and, and um, you know, make sure that it is within plus or minus 2%. So this is some of the quick definitions. I think everybody is, you know, we try to use the grip compliance in, when we are comparing the models. And uh, we, these are some of the basic definitions. So this is uh, some of the, uh, you know, so you can see the red line is the control SCC. And most of the mixes, when we add fibers to them, they had, uh, much higher uh, creep strength. We, we uh, you know, and, and you can see that the steel uh, fiber, the, the black colored one, has performed a little bit uh, higher creep than the control specimen. And I believe that is changing the porosity and, and some of the mechanism. Uh, I, we don't understand it exactly why, but uh, this seems to be uh, the, the performance that, that they are creeping more than the control specimen. Uh, so the paper had it the opposite side, and I think that's where we're trying to find out. I think it's the percentage of fiber that they have used were very, very high. And you can see the percentages here above the control. So the steel one was the one, you know, almost double the strain, uh, you know, that one. So uh, this is also the, uh, we tried to look at the specific creep and the creep compliance, and we had similar, uh, you know, behavior on those. And you can see that the uh, uh, shorter fiber, uh, the shorter product, the 1.5 inches, had lower uh, specific creep and, and lower creep compliance. Uh, the hybrid one, I think it, that didn't help much with the creep, it didn't help the shrinkage part, as we will see later on. And uh, for the idea of looking at these models, it was just to, uh, although the models do not take into account the fiber percentages or the volume, uh, we tried to look at if they were used, you know, what would be the range and uh, if we could maybe adjust the models based on what we are getting. And the most of the, if you look at the creep compliance in this case, uh, most of the models were, were very close, especially in the, you know, uh, you know, for the, uh, for the creep compliance, they were very close along, you know, but majority of the cases we had, the V3 models seemed to be really uh, very close. And we took at similar to what uh, uh, Professor Morcos did in terms of the variance at every point. So we took all the points and we checked the variance. And we, based on that, we concluded that the V3 model was really following uh, fundamentally the trends when, when we add the fibers. Uh, for the for the cream. however for the shrinkage model, I, I believe that the uh, CEB model was much better in, in that case. Um, so this is still the, the uh, cream uh, for the other three mixes, the hybrid one, and and the uh, this is the uh, the steel at the end. And so, again, my presentation is very short, and, uh, but this is the conclusion that there's more work to be uh, done. What, why, is the, uh, why do they behave like that, the fibers? What is the impact of the fiber on the creep performance? That's what we are trying to work right now. So, in conclusion, I think the P3 model uh, has performed uh, very well compared, more consistent in the behavior than the other, especially the ACI 209. Thank you for your